Bali in 1975 was the best place on earth. You had to hang on to your lives and hang on to your wives. It was the morning of the earth. Now it's all traffic and billboards out there. But then it was like a little village. In 75, at the end of the Vietnam War, Bali ended up being a, a melting place. We had a lot of soldiers, the Air Force guys, people from everywhere just started to converge on the place. There was a certain nihilism that grew out of the 60s. And when people came back from the Vietnam War, they were spat on, they were disregarded, their service was totally forgotten. It would be very easy to have a total disregard for society after that. It would be very easy to take a step from there into the dark side. In the mid-70s, Bali was awash with heroin, hash, any drug you could name, surface in those days that would live off smuggling and, you know, sustain their existence in Bali. When you're swallowing a pound of pure ether wash cocaine, the major thing that goes through your mind is the obvious. Is my packaging going to work? If this bursts, I'm dead. Surfing's an addiction, and it's a bit like a sexual addiction almost. You know, you've got to get it all the time, and if you can't own it, you get ahead of it, and you've got to work really hard to get another one, and you can't dictate terms. It's really good surfing. I think it is that the fact you can't own it which sucks you into it. That is why so many people decided it was probably easier to smuggle dope and get large amounts of money for a small amount of work and then live off the proceeds and go surfing. And I think a lot of the reasons that, that surfing became so part of the, the drug culture is to feed that addiction to surfing. It's caused a lot of people to take dark tracks to support the habit. <laughs> 